Welcome to Rich Girls Modeling. This is part three of Revel Special Enterprise and 747. The scale is 1 to 144. In part one and two, I went through the unboxing and uh, I started work on the shuttle. So in part three, I'm going to be carrying on work with the shuttle, getting everything ready for painting. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. Working on the areas for the uh, engine here and these are two columns that go on the tail end of it but first of all I have to make up the uh, little bracket that holds it together and it's just um, a, a little bit of, it goes in the inside it has a little lip on it so it creates a ridge for the connection point there is a left and right to this so it's important to make sure you get them in the right order but they simply just um, push on up against the fuselage and everything is all right so next I'm making up part of the engine system which goes on the, the tail end of the part I've just placed on. I, I don't know the name the names of these parts, uh, so you'll just have to bear with me on that. But it's all part of the 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 back area where the engines go. However, I'm not actually going to be placing on the engines and doing nothing to the engines because I'm I'm having this with the uh, covering on and this is a, a solid piece it goes right on the back to protect the shuttle when it's in transit. So th this is the piece I'm going to be putting on. So I'm just putting these little parts on to stabilise the uh, main piece. Um, th this part actually is part of the hinge, not not part of the engine. It's part of the hinge for this uh, main piece going on. However, this part is very, very difficult to fit. There, there was gaps everywhere. Now I'm not sure whether it was me or just the nature of the part but I, I had um, some trouble with it. I always like to give the kit the benefit of the, the doubt that's why I say it may have well be me but um, I couldn't get the parts uh, to to meet properly. There was um, little gaps and it took a lot of dry fin to get into a position where I was happy with but still it would need uh, some filling. But first of all uh, the little hinge here that go on that I had to get sanded down a little bit for that to fit. There was definitely not a room for for this to close up properly. If I did close it up properly, um, within the confines of the area, then there would have been a larger gap. So while I'm waiting for that part to drive, I'm just going to be making up the wings, as you can see here. Um, the, these are just two wings sandwiched together with um held together with uh, some clamps so it's back to the tail end and um there's uh, quite a bit of sanding to do before i even think about the filler um i think i may have pushed this on too far with trying to get it connected hence why there was a, a bit of a ridge there and um on the same which needs to be taken care of and now for the filler, I'm using the um, sprue glue. So this is um, melted down sprue with a little bit of poly cement. And I'm just filling in the areas where it needs to be. Now with the hinges, this was a massive area to fill in. Um, as I said, I just couldn't get them to fit right. So because I'm using a lot of filters, it's going to need quite a lot of drying time as well. Uh, at least two to three hours. So it's back to the wings. And I just discovered where the wing roots are, the um, location areas didn't quite fit. So I'm having to trim down these stabilizing parts here. They were slightly too long for, for the um, area for them to slide into. And I had to trim them down slightly as well. I thought they may have been bumping on to the little extra bit of plastic card uh, I um, installed into the hull. It wasn't necessarily the case, but taking them down a little bit was advantageous but they were definitely too long for the actual area for them to go into if, if i can just um slip them in there they were i, I just couldn't get them in because um it, it was, they were too long so they had to be trimmed down that's the filler now dried and um, so it's time to sand all that down um, i'm using quite heavy great great sanding paper here uh, to take them down and um, I'll just put down the grades until I'm happy to be a nice smooth finish. So it's uh, back to the wings once more. And um, 
and just cutting off the ends of these um, support parts here uh, for the uh, wing to fit. Once I did this, it fitted perfectly. There was a, a little bit of gapping um, on the wing route on the underneath part, but I'll get to that in a moment. The, the, the more main point here was to make sure the length of the wing fitted against the fuselage. So once the drive fitted it, um, it fitted in perfectly. The um, area bumped right up to the fuselage, so there's a tiny little bit of gap um, on the wing route, the underside of the um, shell, but nothing major. Next is to place in the covers for the landing gear. Now, I was debating whether I should uh, have the, the gear down or not, but I thought... Um, it wouldn't have the landing gear down actually on the aircraft and the photos I saw um, I all had it up so uh, I decided just to put the covers in in flight mode and it was the same with the covers for the wings now I may have made a mistake here also as well um, I should have looked at the um, instructions further on than I did uh, or definitely should have studied the aircraft more it appears that the struts that hold the shuttlecraft to the aircraft um, connection points are inside the uh, landing gear area here. I didn't realise that at the time when I sealed these up. Um, now I'm not 100% sure if that is correct or not, but the photos I've looked at all seem to suggest that. Um, the instructions don't actually tell you to place them there. The instructions are, far, are not very clear at all on this point. I just showed you a picture of them with the part number um, installed. Um, it's not very clear at all. But that's something I'm going to have to work around once I get to that point. So as you can see there, I'm starting to sand down the um, the covers. The, I think when they designed this gear, they designed it for the landing gear to be down because uh, these parts are too prominent. They, they're sticking up far too much. And remember, the um, underside of the shell should be completely smooth. Well, not completely smooth with the tiling, but these should be flush with the fuselage. But it didn't take long to um, get them down to the um, level that I wanted anyway. Um, as always, I use my rough file, then work my way down to a uh, smooth uh, sand and grate. And I applied the same technique to the wings uh, as well, uh, just um, sanding them down till they're flush with the wing. As I said, there was a small gap in issue at the bottom of the wing route. So what I'm doing here is I'm placing on the filler now. This enables me... Um, to not make it too messy a contact but once the wing goes on and also this um, filler acts as a bonding engine as well of course so um, it solves two problems straight away um, it's a very good way to do it if you've got a, a small um, gap in issue and you're using something like sprue glue to uh, fill that gap in use it as a cement as well because that's what it is and um, it will bond and fill the gap at the same time but if you're doing uh, this technique, make sure you don't put on too much because it will just ooze everywhere uh, if you do. So use it sparingly. Remember when you push something in, it's just going to come out. So bear that in mind. And the areas you're not going to put it on, just put normal cement on and that will take care of the uh, bonding completely for, for your area that you, you wish. To bond so as you can see there i'm just using the normal cement at the top of the wing route and where no filling will be required and once i've got the wings on it will take it another good couple of hours for this to dry make sure it's 100 percent dry before you you begin sanding because um well it won't sand properly but once it's dry it will behave exactly like uh, the normal plastic would do and once i'm happy with the one wing i'll, I'll obviously proceed to the second wing. I'm just wiping off any excess there so if I flip it around you can see I'm um, just coming through and uh, I'll just take a bit of kitchen towel and wipe off any excess and that'll be it until it dries. 
So next is just uh, sanding it all down after a couple of hours. And this is where I'll leave part three. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out my channel for my other builds. If you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date, not only with this build, but all my future builds as well, of course. Hit that like button. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. And of course, you can share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.